Uh, we're going to start off with a word of prayer. Thank you, Alice, for that. Let's have ourselves and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this session, and we are thankful that we are going to finally vote online. We pray for your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding throughout this session. Be with us and enable us to achieve the targets we have set for ourselves here. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Okay, once again, my name is <coughs> Edwin. Um, I've had the privilege of working on this system with a few colleagues of mine at UIS. Uh, the purpose of this presentation is to show you the steps. Okay, so just to give you a little background, this is an online voting system. Already student data is inside, so the first step for every student when they come is to register for a student account. So to do this, you have to visit the UIS offices, that's University ICT Services, on level three, Ham Mukasa a building. And when you get there, you ask to create a Wi-Fi student account. Now, you don't need a mobile phone to have a Wi-Fi student account. All you need is to have a passbook, uh, because this Wi-Fi account is not just for internet, much as we call it the Wi-Fi account. It's for e-learning, it's for cloud, it's for mail, okay? So I just wanted to make that point very clear. Okay, so once this account has been created, or, be, or let's say you already have your account, and you're saying, okay, I have my, e uh, my Wi-Fi account, I've been able to log into e-learning before, what do I do? You continue to step two, so step two, you log into your student email. So the student email is an email that all you see your students have, provided you still are a student. When you graduate, we take the email away. So your Wi-Fi details help you to log into your student email. So on step two, on your laptop or phone, go to that address there and log into your uh, student account with the details that we used up here. So I'm just going to show us how that looks like in real life. Let me just... Um, so this is my, uh, this is my computer. I, I'm just going to log into my student email. I set up a demo student email just for this session. So that is students.ucu.sc.ug. That address is already in the other instruction, no? So my username is a very simple one. So here, you would have your access number. For example, A, I'm just going to use XX, because I don't know any offhead right now. But something, for example, like this, can be your uh, username, and then your password for Wi-Fi. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and put my test access number. Then my test password. Okay, so I've logged into my student email. You're seeing these mails, these mails because I've been using it to test a couple of things. The first time you log into your student email, you get an email like this. Ignore it. It was for the previous election. Don't mind much about it. So you have finished step two. So I can just sign out of it. Okay. So step one, register for an account. Step two, log in to your email with that account. Step three, check if you are eligible to vote. Now this is very important. Because some people simply end on step two and then wait for the day of election. No, you need to check if you're, uh, you're eligible to vote. How do you do that? By going to 
our e-voting portal, which is itragua.ucu.ac.ug, and you click on the voter register link, okay, to search for your access number. So I'm just going to show us how that looks like. So that is Ichagua. Ichagua.ucu.sc.ug. So if you visit our voting portal the very first time, you should see a page like this. Our screen is a bit big. <laughs> So certain features look, are looking in a certain way, but I want to draw our attention to the voter register link, okay? So you tap on that, and then you'll be greeted by a list of the eligible voters for our 2019 election. So what you do is you search for your access number. Now, my access number for my test uh, for this demonstration is this, Z001. So if I punch in my access number, I should be able to see the number, the registration number, the program. The program is the course I do, my first name and my last name. Now it's important for you to have the right access number and registration numbers. Because at the time of creating a password, which is the next step, if these details don't, uh, don't correlate or they are wrong, you will not be able to create the password. So. For example, if I'm checking this and I see that my registration number uh, is maybe ending with a 06 and they have made it 09, you have to actually come uh, to UIS and correct that. That might be a challenge. Okay, so at this point, I've checked my registration number is okay, my access number is okay. I appear on the voter register. What do I do next? We go to uh, step number four. So there we are, step number four, register to vote. So we don't take it for granted that everyone who is eligible to vote will actually vote. We only prepare for those who are fully registered to vote. The good news is you can do it still on, uh, on the internet by yourself. You visit the same e-learning platform where we are, but now you're going to a link which is saying cast your, uh, which is saying, uh, cast your vote. Okay, that changed a bit. Let me just show us. So on the e-learning uh, uh, portal, cast your vote. But let me just take us there very, very fast. So you'll visit that cast your vote link, and it should load this page. OK. so. Cast your vote loads a page like this, which is asking you to input your registration number and your access number. If you input the correct access number and registration number, you will be allowed to generate a password. These are the instructions here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my details. So when I hit submit, I'm now on the password generation page. I'll hit generate password. You see what that message says? It says check your email for login details. So we're doing this because we want the password to be sent directly to your email. We don't want it to, to be captured by somebody else. So this one throws you to the system because we know that from your email you'll just come to vote. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign into my student email. That's the next step. I just sign in. My username and password. Okay, and as you can see, I've received a new email, which is saying, you see each Agua voting portal, voter login instructions. And if I open it, it will say, hello, your e-voting details are, Username is that, 
password is that. This password is unique to me. If you get it and try to log in, it won't work for you. If I log in and vote, and you get it and vote and try to log in again for me, it won't work. Okay. So there's a link saying click here to log in and vote. So all you have to do is by now you already know your access number in your head. It's just the password that you need, so I'll just copy that and keep it on in my memory, computer memory, then I'll click here. So here I'm just going to put in my access number. And password. Paste that. Sign in. And now I'm in. I'm ready to vote. So I set up this uh, as a test vote. Here, your name will appear with the faculty that you belong to. Surname, first name. So to see the position, the candidates, I'll click on this. Every, every position will have a, a title here. For example, MP Divinity, it is bringing these people, will have different positions, president and the rest. So to vote, we have some instructions here. Select a post. When you select a post, you'll see the respective candidates. Cast your vote by clicking on, the respective, on your respective choice. To your right, there's a list of selected candidates. Okay, so I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm just going to vote this guy. Now for this, this particular pos uh, position, it had to be two votes. So I'm allowed to continue and vote another person. However, if I want to vote the third person, I get a message, an error card, you're only allowed to vote uh, two candidates for this position. Okay. And in case I, uh, I say, okay, maybe I want to change, I want to change my, I want to change my mind, I'll click on review, and I can remove someone I had already chosen, and I choose somebody else. Like that. This is before I submit. Okay, when you submit, that's it. So, let's say, you know, this is it. You're, you're, you're done. You don't want to clear your ballot. You want to submit. So, submit. They say, are you sure you want to submit? You say, yeah. They show you the ballot again. You say, yes, I'm sure. I'm in my right mind. You say, yes. Okay, thank you for participating. You tap that. You logged out. Let me try to log in like the way any hacker would want to do. I'm just going to try to log in with my password in the memory. I get a message saying, sorry, you voted already. So it only allows one vote at a go. Um, that's, that's basically it. Those are basically the steps to vote on this uh, image. We've also included an email and a couple of WhatsApp numbers for any comments or for any questions. We know that people will find trouble, maybe in the process as they're trying to say, as they're trying to check if their names are on the list. If your name is say or not on the list, what do you do? Get in touch with one of these people here. You can walk to UIS. And, we, and uh, we, we confirm that your name is on the voter register we were sent from academics. Yeah. Any uh, questions? Okay. Maybe they'll come with time. But this is basically it. It's a very simple system to follow. I've tried to make it um, very clear. And the steps are very clear. Even if you simply got this image and followed step by step you'll get it also when we f uh, when we fully put up the list of all the registered all the eligible people to vote we will send it to uh, the electoral commission and they'll circulate it to the students so you don't have to worry that uh, you know you need to cram the the um, the address of the system in your head but what we'll do is we'll send the list the link with the list not the pdf but we'll send you the link with the list 
so that you can just go there and put in either your access number or your wage number or any of your names and you should appear on that list. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, my question is about when you're voting. You said that you can vote one person at a go, but I imagine you're going to vote for president and then MP, my faculty, and then maybe non-residents or something like that. So before you submit, do you submit like for each individual candidate or like you get a list of all the people you voted and then submit at the same time? Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. So like I showed you in the system, I can't log in again because I had already voted. But on this, uh, on, on your left, my right, on your left, there's a list, and this list has the different positions you're eligible to vote. So for example, if you stay outside, it would be MP and non-resident. If you stay inside, it would be MP resident. So when you select a position, it's added to your ballot, but you'd need to keep going down the list for all the people that you're eligible to vote. Then when you hit submit, it allows you to look at the list and maybe remove or or say, okay, this is what I want, and then you submit. Yeah. Okay, yes. I'm wondering how specific the voter registry is. For example, MP non-resident and MP resident. Is it like, is it very clear as to who slips inside and who does not? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the system, the voter register that we have, when you are registering with the, with at the entrance, like when you enter and you see, you are as automatically registered as a resident. But once you move out, the DOSA's office actually updates the list. So on the voter registrar, like you see, that is where we have the program, the first number, there is a section for residents and non-residents. So it's not automatic that you have to vote for the, pre the resident when you are a non-resident. So the, the list will actually be sorted at the end, yeah. Just, just to add something to what he said, when we get the, your names from academics, they tell us who stays inside and who doesn't. So even if you find your name here, when you log in, we only feed you what you're eligible. So a person doing SESWASA won't have MP law, and if they're staying outside, they won't have MP resident as voting options. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, the system presumes that all of us have smartphones. And as we talk, we have students who have not, who are still in the other small thing. Did this system really put into contemplation what would happen if the majority of those come up? Second is regards to network. I may be where there is no Wi-Fi and really I'm interested in casting what? My, my vote, maybe data is an issue, but I, I am eligible voter. Let me hope ta someone is noting that. Then substitution system. What if the system breaks down? that election day, things happen, and we are waiting for results, students are charged up, you know? Do you have any other means of, you know, we have, do, have you had any substitution systems that we can say, if that one is not working, we shall still have the right candidate declared? And last is, how best are you planning to capture multi-practices? Because we are looking at the Trump-Clinton issue you know, it's not yet clear. Let me hope someone is not going to smartly mal, uh, mal, mal manipulate the system and uh, we vote another, then another one is declared. So in summary, respond to students without phones, network problems, any substitution systems in case the e-voting system breaks down, and lastly, measures to capture multi-practices so that we are not given a leader whom we actually don't didn't vote. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Aris. Uh, I maybe a point of correction. He's a technical person. So some questions are actually going to the electoral commission. Yeah, like mad practice, like someone does not have a smartphone. So we, we are at work with the UIS department. We are aware because we, are, we carried out a voting in the Easter elections. Most reverends actually don't have smartphones. So what we did, we had to secure different uh, laboratories in UCU that have Wi-Fi, strong Wi-Fi, inclusive this one. But this one was specifically for uh, the, the tallying, the agents, so that actually solves the mad practice. If you send uh, an agent here, and he's actually seeing whatever is taking place, because whoever casts a vote, it actually, the system records that. Okay? If we have 2,000 voters, and we've even within here, you cast a vote, we shall have 1,999, those who have not voted. So if you are within here and you are an agent of someone, at the start you had 2,000 voters, now you have 2,500. So where have the 500 come from? So that's where we start from, from there. Okay? So I can assure you that if you have 2,000 people who are supposed to vote, then you see 2,001, it means there is an issue. So they have to raise an alarm there. But I can guarantee you, now on the issue of the system breaking down, what we had to do substantial uh, tests, of which I've already done one for Easter. But even before Easter, we had some other tests. Up to the voting day, the least number of tests that we can have are actually around 20. The least. Because the presidents for associations will also first use the test for the general. So by that time, I'm sure we shall have recorded some issues for that uh, main day. Okay. Then you say the network issue. I think the network issue goes with the non-smartphone users. Okay, on that day, we had to request, or even on the Easter, Easter elections, we had to request for the best devices around the laboratories for the strongest Wi-Fi. But still we have, we shall have polling stations. You know that the old polling stations will actually go away. People still don't know how to, even if we do the presentations, there will be someone who will have some issues. So even the electoral commission, we still have some people to guide those on a specific <coughs> locations, but that will be the infrastructure around UCU. So I can say that for network and system breaking down, by the time we are to vote, there will have been, if there is an issue, but I, I, may I know there is no issue, it shall have been rectified. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I can talk about the hackers. What we've done is we have a security team in the office. And their job is to look for bugs in all the systems we develop. They look for faults and areas where people can hack. And we've so far passed about two security tests uh, internally. We are going to continue testing it for bugs so that by de uh, December, December, September, by September we are good to go. So I, I can't stand and say, oh, we are very secure, no? But at least to a very big level, the first two tests are saying we are okay. We are okay. So I want to just comfort us that we have taken time to put security into consideration. And also, just like the way you saw when you log into the system, you can't log in again. You can't vote for more people than you are allowed for a particular position. So for a say president, you can't vote two people for president. So what we've done is we follow the rules that the Electoral Commission gives us and we set the parameters in the system. So we are going to do a test at a date that the Electoral Commission will, will communicate where again we'll further test those parameters so that by September we, we know and you know that you cannot uh, crack the system and you cannot vote. Um, so he's talked about something. As the vote is going on, there will be a screen uh, where you'll be seeing this is how my candidate is doing at 1 a.m. This is how my candidate is doing at this time. So there is nothing like uh, someone coming up with a final result that you don't know of. 
So that is going to solve a lot of these issues that say maybe at this polling session there was malpractice and that. So I just wanted to re-echo on that. Yeah, thank you so much. Any other questions? Can someone vote while at home? Someone is at home. Then two, if I'm trying to log in to vote for my favorite candidate and I reach on the way, it gets stuck. You know, I don't know. I cannot go back. I can't go forward. But I want to vote. Is there any physical voting point where I can report to, either like what we did last time, and maybe you give me the paperwork? And I do it physically, or the, is there another remedy for me once I'm now stuck? And where do I report to? Okay, for, for the issue of getting stuck while uh, conducting or carrying out the voting process, and uh, if you get stuck before you cast the ballot, still you have not voted. So if you say that uh, I'm now stuck, like we said, we shall put some polling stations. And there will be electoral commission committee and maybe the commissioners themselves. So they go through vetting and we tell them actually if even if a voter, even these uh, ballot papers that we have been having, you go with someone, these elderly people, you see this is how it is done. So see on the vote, on the polling stations, we shall be there to guide. If you say that now I'm stuck here, we guide you. We guide you what to do. You do this. Then on the casting, it is your lot to actually place because people, and even those that are blind or don't know how to talk or the rest. So we, we, took, we took that in, in, in consideration. Even someone who does not know how to talk, because he might have an issue, but he can write. Okay? So we put some areas. If there is an issue, someone tells you. And we are independent. The electoral commission is independent. So you tell someone this and this. And before you cast, you actually show the person, this is this what you want. If somebody says yes, then you proceed. So if someone does n gets an issue and is in hostel, I think, or somewhere else, Kabare or Guru, because also those can vote, or on same or off same. That's why we have some numbers there. And there will be designated actually for you to, to get the maximum help that you can get. That is specifically from the Electoral Commission, because that is an, an issue for Electoral Commission. So I can say we shall be able to be hands-on for all throughout the electoral, electoral process. Um, so about um, different campuses, how does that work? Can Okay, um, I was going to say that I do not think that two numbers will be enough on that day with the, people of, with the number of people that will be getting issues. So if maybe there was some sort of helpline and there are multiple people that someone can talk to when they call in and they have a problem, that would be nice. But two is, I feel it's little, I don't know what others think. Uh, for different campuses, I think that's a technical issue. We can maybe what you have in plan. Okay. Thank you so much. So since this is an online system, uh, someone asked, "Can you vote from home?" Yes, you can vote from home with MBs. That is linked to the different campuses. This system is hosted here, but we can create an election and lock it for main campus, and we create an election and lock it for Kampala or Mbale. So yes, different campuses, provided we have all the student data <coughs> and we know who's standing for which position, they can actually vote online. I will let him handle the issue of the numbers, the helplines. Thank you, Madam President, about that question. Actually, as you can see, there is a CTR person. It's supposed to be publicity, finance secretary. But this was all for, in the case of right, right now, in case we want to ask anything. But there will be uh, emails, uh, then text even the UIS people to help us through. Two numbers cannot be enough. And I'm not always online for that. 
So many people can be of any help. But if you call me, starting from today up to August, I can direct you. But after that, the publicity, general secretary, UIS, and some people from ASCOM now that are here. Just as she has suggested that we may need uh, multiple numbers to seek help, I'm also suggesting that we have a central point with something as ex executive as this in Koyoyo, that we are there to monitor our leaders coming on board than to call us just at midnight and then tell us now the electoral commission is announcing. Can we have a central point where after I vote my vo uh, after I cast my vote, I go there, monitor what is uh, actually transpiring, such that by the time you give us uh, the results, some of us can stand and say, yes, we were there. Now, she has, now that she has talked about that, I was thinking about, so if I finish voting, now me who may not be on campus and I'm off, and I want to know how my candidate is doing, do I also have access to that to see how the numbers are going? Thank you so much. I think I will still use the reference of the Easter elections. We had uh, different agents here for different candidates. Though the candidate cannot be allowed inside. This was our, like the major turning center here. So after like 30 minutes, would allow the agents to see how their candidates are faring. Okay? See the percentages and how it is moving on. Like after 30 minutes or one hour would allow them to see how they are faring, the candidates. Then if the election was going from 8 to 5, okay, in Easter we extended up to 5.30 because of some issues. At exactly 5.40, instead of staying in Koyo for six hours, we were here and the system automatically calculates and gives you the winner and the rest. There's nothing like one vote, two, and the rest. It is immediate, it is automatic. And basing on how the candidates have been firing, sincerely, if you, you are an agent of someone, eh, so it's about candidate A had 20% at exactly 4.30. Okay, the media can be any magic, but someone, any other candidate B had 80% or the other percentage. Okay, and it's 5.30, the candidate who had uh, 20% at, f at 4.58 now has more percentage, there will be an issue. But that one cannot, because they can, the agents have to be here. So somebody is in cover and has casted the vote. There will be provisional results. I think it, it, that is what even the Electoral Commission it, or anywhere uses. So it is provide uh, the provisional for now. Certain constituency or here, how people are faring, and that will be the role of the publicist actually to do, to make sure the people are informed how things are, are moving. Yeah, but not the candidate to be in the room. It will be the agents for the different candidates to be here, and they see how things are moving. Because the candidate might get shocked and defense as things are not moving on way. But I guess the agents will be here with the uh, Electoral Commission Committee and security to see how things are faring. It's not that someone will cast a vote, uh, go at hostel and wait how someone has won. No, you'll be seeing the progress, the charts and how people, the percentages and how people are going on. Thank you. Okay. And um, from our Mascom students, I, I, I really want, like, you help us so much into this, you publicize. Since I'm not yet saying we have agreed like we are to use this, but I, I beg, since you are the most people to ap ap approach and able to do, I've appreciated how uh, the different faces here have come to us. There is e-voting, there is e-voting. And they have been very well, like they always inform to us, this is going on like this. And I would like to say from the Electoral Commission Committee to say we give them an applause because they have really great, a good job. Okay, in case of any other thing, you can raise the question, but he's the main person. Um, just one more thing. I think in our previous election, the biggest challenge we had 
was the inaccurate voter register. What we've done this time is we've got the names beforehand. So I can assure us that at least for as of today, we have the names of all the continuing students and we are populating this voter register to be accurate. So uh, when you are asked to go out to begin to check and verify your names, please do. I think people did do that. And then they woke up on the voting day, they went to the system, they got, you know, they couldn't log in, they became frantic, they came here, their names are not there. There was, there was a lot of chaos. But this, it's usually important that when these steps are published, and we've already shared them with the Electoral Commission, when they are published, people begin to respond because that will help us to know, oh, this person is not on the list. Are they actual students? Is it a problem on our side? So that everybody is catered for way, way, way before the election. Yeah, there's a question. Um, mine is not a question, but it's like a request and maybe something to say. I want to say thank you so much for uh, supporting us in our work, uh, we are looking at this, maybe for some of you who didn't know what we do and why we are here. It's a class project. Uh, they asked us to do something and we thought of why not do e-learning. And the good thing we also, e-voting, sorry, we got to learn that there's a campaign that you guys are going to run and that's why we are so engaged in this. So we want to say thank you so much, Edwin, for the times we have come to you. <laughs> and you've helped us, and to Henry, really, we want to say thank you. And also, we would uh, like you guys to share uh, with us your schedule. And we had already talked to Mr. Arinitwe about uh, involving us in your campaigns. If you're going to a class, we are really here to be there with you moving around. <laughs> Not that you're going to get money or anything, but we just want to support you, give you guys some labor, free labor. And uh, yeah, we really ask you guys to work with us and we also work with you. And yeah, it will be a win-win kind of thing. So thank you so much. Really. Thank you so much. Uh, like you said, you talked about the schedule. We shall surely update you. And we have been working from January up to now, maybe to starting from now, the end. But in June we have uh, we have a test vote that will happen around 15th. Or in case of any change, we shall update you. And for voter register registration for those that are on semester, specifically the new students and also the continuing students that are not yet on one register for a student account. Okay, so it, it will be done uh, depending on the programs that we have. So we shall uh, automatically invite you people to go different classes and we see how we can register. But June we have uh, a, a test that shall be carried out for the whole university uh, from time to time. Then like I said, uh, there is need of putting a center and I, I, I thought about it last semester, but because of some protocol, I could not skip some things. But I can say September for the new students, because we, uh, we don't have them in there, because they have not reported anyway. So we don't have their reg number and access number. So on the voting day, even the continuous students who, don't ha who will not have registered for uh, uh, step one, most of those who are off semester, who shall be guide they shall be guided on that day using the UIS department and also some of us on the reporting day of students. So to make sure that by the first two weeks or first three weeks, we are done with the voter registrar and it, we are ready to cut out a voting process. But June, we have vo uh, testing, we have voter registration, and we shall do another test uh, towards the end of the semester and at the start of the semester and different associations. Thank you so much. This will be my last submission. Awareness. 
since the semester began, I've had issues with awareness as a leader. The bishop dies, you go for burial, you come back, people ask you, where are you from? I'm from bishop's burial. You mean the, the bishop died? The coach died, we went for burial. You mean the coach died? You know, students are behind schedule. And I'm very much appreciative to the standard. But the standard ran the coach's uh, burial staff after like three weeks. I saw that thing on the standard like three weeks later. And I'm like, are they breaking news? So we may, so we are here. No, it's, it's, it's not to undermine our systems, but let's look forward to learning from them. The students, even in the DH, don't know the guilty president. Even some of you have just learned that she is an electoral commission member. The last time I saw her, maybe very physically, was when Mr. Kabushenga came and when she was being handed to Solomon. I didn't know you were part of the electoral commission until I saw you in these beautiful shirts. Now what's happening is, the students may not even know about this thing until we are done with the elections. Then they are like, you mean there was a system? So what am I suggesting? Can we ensure that we take the system to the students? Not the students looking for the system. It's when they are, we have conducted enough uh, of uh, civic education that they can now come looking for us. DH is a central area. Community worship, like the theologians are always uh, meeting in the morning. Can you, 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 you not take advantage of those, uh, 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 those already designated areas? Otherwise, we shall learn of people who are saying we didn't even know that this system did what? Existed. And we shall have people missing out. So let it reach to the MASCOM members that update your game up it right now and let us ensure that students first know that there is a system that has come on board. Just that alone is my problem. Let them, whenever we walk, like when they see me, they just know this is Tim Bruce. Are you getting that automatic connection that where we are now, Elan, uh, uh, e voting? So let us take advantage of all that, the catering department. You know, estates, are they? No, it's not about just students, but it's about wholesome knowledge. And maybe, let's also ensure that when things don't work out, create mechanisms of how best to address them as quick as possible. Because the tempers that evening, I have been in that field, and I know what it means for my candidate to fail. I know how hard it is. So give us the solution points that when students are dissatisfi dissatisfied, we can quickly tell them it can still be worked out. Can give us those solution points, but don't lead us to police. Thank you. Maybe I could give her uh, answers for s to some of the things she has been asking. That is actually our main goal here is to create awareness. That's why we are here about this. Because before we um, thought of doing this, we had very many uh, options. We had very many things on that table. And we did situation analysis for each one of them. And we realized why we picked this is because we realized that people do not know about it, and yet it's something that they have to do. Right? So that is why we actually are here. I mean, uh, uh, what we are doing is to create awareness and inform these students and also educate them about e-voting. Um, so don't worry about that. We are here to do That's why I was telling you guys, do not worry about some of these things. We are here for you. <laughs> we are going to help you and create this awareness, really. That's why we are asking you guys to work with us and we work with you. Maybe, okay, not about the shots, but yeah, really, we are going to do this. We are planning <laughs> on uh, going to Boyoyo talking about it. We are planning on going to the DH to talk about uh, e-learning so that people know. E-voting, sorry, sorry. Voting online, let me use that. Voting online so that people know that they can do this even, I mean, they can do this at their convenience, okay? So, yeah, Alice, just don't worry about that. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to bring to your attention that uh, you have grassroots. 
And that is a powerful tool. And don't take it for granted. And I was actually going to kindly request if you could do something like this for class representatives to understand so that if they go to their classes and tell these people, they know what they are talking about and they can answer some of these questions. Yes. say thank you all and when madam president says that because i would not say i would need an invitation whenever there's a meeting for class reps i'll surely be there for to with with him uh, so that we can cut out a demonstration i think i'd already sent an email to you or whatsapp requesting in case there's a meeting oh welcome sir so we are talking to the top people so in case of anything, please, we are here. Just call on us, we'll be there. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would say that if there is no any other question or reaction, we can, we can have uh, a cro closing remarks, okay. Thank you all. This has been the Electoral Commission in Conjunction with the U.S. Department, headed by, anyway, represented by Mr. Edwin, is a very cool person. During the Easter elections, you would send you a message at 1 a.m. Henry, this is missing. This is I was like, okay, let us do this even when I'm relaxed. So he's so hardworking, and I really appreciate your efforts. People might think we are paying him. No, <laughs> we are not. So that is the passion that he has for the system. When you work with that passion. Okay, most of us are like electoral commission, if not all, are off semester that are here. But once there is a call of service, you have to make sure you are there. And I thank you, Madam President. I thank you, sir, Vice President. And I thank the people from the MASCOM. Please, you are the media that we want to use. And I request, in case of anything, be there on our behalf. And I, I think we'll be able to do a great job. Thank you all. Thank you all. I still remain Henry Anaitre. In case of anything, that's my number. We shall add more numbers for any inquiry about e voting. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, we started with an opening prayer. We must end with a closing prayer uh, led by uh, any Muslim student. <laughs> So much for the gift of today. One thank you for this meeting. We pray that you may be with us as we go out to implement, to start on it, and we pray for your blessings. We've prayed all this believing and trusting in your mighty name.